How do you imagine Prince Harry is going to be, uh, is he going to be happy celebrating his, his 40th birthday in Montecito? Well, 40 is supposed to be a turning point in a young man's life. Um, it's, you know, you, you forget the, the craziness of youth you, and you, you, you become more, more not, I wouldn't say more adult, but you become wiser. Now, has Harry become wiser? I think he probably has. And I think, I personally think Harry is very happy in Montecito. There's no reason not to be. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. You've got the mountains, you've got the sea, you've got the amazing climate, and he's also focused on whatever philanthropic work he happens to be doing. Well, we've heard rumours recently. I mean, I say the Sussexes deny this. They say he's very happy in the US. Um, yes, he has been reaching back to friends, but he doesn't. But we're hearing these rumours that he wants to spend more time in the UK, that he wants to rehabilitate himself. This Operation Save Prince Harry or Operation Rehabilitate Prince Harry. He wants people in the UK, his old friends, to help him get elements of, of his past life back in the UK. Do you, think, do you think that's true? Do you think that's plausible? I don't think it's very plausible because mm. I really, truly believe that Harry is happy. Okay. He doesn't look happy in photographs because he hates being photographed. And of course, we know he's got, you know, he's got a, a war with all of us media, all mm. of us. Um, so I, I think, you know, when he hears the click of a camera, he puts on that, that grumpy look. Whereas Meghan's got the sort of perma smile. Mm. I feel that I do think Harry is happy and I don't think for one moment he wants to come back here. I think he wants to be able to visit, but that, that depends on, on the security, and that's another story. I mean, he's always been obsessed about security. Mm. In um, a, a colleague we know, Valentine Lowe, former Times reporter, wrote a book, Courtiers, and in it, he said that Harry, um, or people close to Harry, had said that he feared that he had a shelf life um, and that he would become an also-ran as he got older. Turning 40, do you think... Harry, you know, is kind of running out of time to, to, to be a success? Well, there's another sort of saying that if you haven't made it by the time you're 40, you're never going to make it. But of course, that's not true. And I think that probably in the back of Harry's mind, he thinks, you know, I've got to get on with it. I've got to really go for it now. Mm. I mean, he has the success of the Invictus Games, which we all know, but we can't really name anything else. Mm. I mean, there's lots of other philanthropic things, but just off the top of my head, I only think Invictus. Mm -hmm. So I think Harry needs to kind of get a stronger foothold into that world that he says that he wants to promote so badly. Well, we, we, we did get an update this week. Um, his new Netflix show will be coming out in December. Um, it's, it's, it's about the world of, of polo. And amazingly, they've called the show Polo. <laughs> um, I've got, how did they come up with that title? So he does have his Netflix uh, deal, and he does have that, that 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 show on its way. But I was thinking about his birthdays. We um, his twenty first birthday, he did a, he did a video and he said that William was the only person that he could truly talk to. And then at his thirtieth birthday, there was a big party at Clarence House. It, it is it is quite crazy. His fortieth birthday, he's going to be car exiled in California with none of the royal family there attending. It's crazy, but sad. Well, what are your thoughts? I think there's a tinge of sadness there. When you think that, you know, 10 years ago, Harry was sitting in the grandeur of Clarence House with all his school friends and his mates from, from Sandhurst and, you know, and William and, uh, uh, and Kate and everybody there. Kate was there, wasn't mm. she? Yes, mm. she was there. Um, and, you know, and now he's in Montesini with a whole new crowd of people that he's only known for probably four, four years maximum. Yeah. So it's very different. But he's moved on in his life, and I think that's very admirable. He hasn't just sat and moaned here. He's actually moved on, and I think that Diane... He's moved on and moaned there. That's what he's, he's done. Yeah, he's really. still moaning, <laughs> but that's Harry. Yeah. Uh, um... I was looking at some statistics as well. I was trying to cast back as, as far as I could to see um, Harry's popularity. And I found some statistics from a polling group called Statista, which say in 2019, 71% of those people asked had a positive, um, positive thoughts about Prince Harry. Now, it's only 32%. In 2019, 22% had a negative view of, of Prince Harry and 60% now have a negative view of Prince Harry. That's compared to 2019. 
That's quite damning, though, isn't it, the last few years? I think what people really dislike that is he dissed his family. Yeah, I think the book Spare might have earned him millions, but gosh, he's paid for it. Oh, he's paying for it still. Mm. And I, I think, especially amongst, you know, the Americans that I know, they hate the idea that he dissed his family. He doesn't speak to his family, doesn't speak to his brother, has never met Meghan's father. I mean, it is very strange. Mm. Is Meghan ashamed of her father? Why hasn't Harry met him? It's, and, and this sort of distancing from family, people find that very alienating. It's quite the opposite to what William and Kate were showing in, in their most recent video. Absolutely, yeah. And, for, and a, a birthday celebration, a big number like 40, should be celebrated by the rest of the family. Well, it certainly should. I mean, it's possible that, that uh, members of, of the Spencer family might be there, but mm. I don't... Okay. It's possible. I mean, I, I, would, I can't imagine that what Harry calls, I think I've told you this before, but Sarah and Janie calls them his red aunts. Right. Because they're the Spencer red hair, well, they were when they were younger. Well, let's, let's speak about the Spencers. Um, when Harry came over for his uncle, Lord Fellow's funeral, he was surrounded by the Spencers. Lady Jane Fellow's, uh, who was, um, and, and um, who was Lord Fellow's is a widow. widow yeah. And also Diana, she was Di she's Diana's sister, and his uncle, L. Spencer, and he stayed at Althorpe. If, if Harry is estranged and um, no sense of reconciliation from the royal family, are the Spencers the answer for, to his, his desire to come back to the UK and build bridges in the UK? Yes, I think the Spencers probably are the answers. Um, the answer, I mean. Mm. I feel that um, he's always, as, as, as he said himself, been very close to his red aunts. And I think that he gets on with... with uh, his uncle, Charles, and obviously he went to stay at Althrop for the weekend because, of course, that's where it was Diana's, uh, the anniversary of her death, and that's where she's buried on the island there. Mm. So, and I think Harry tries, and certainly used to with William, go every year to visit her grave, you know, as near a, as anything around her, the time of her birthday. Um, and I think the Spencers are actually making a big effort to include him. And they've got all, you see, they... Obviously, the, the Spencer children, if you like, well, they're not children, they're grown up now, Harry's cousins, he's, he's actually become quite close to. Well, this is your area of expertise, um, the, the, the world of Princess Diana and, and the world of the Spencers. Um, would, would, do you think the royal family would be nervous about Harry be, becoming close with Earl Spencer? We always remember what, what Charles Spencer said at the funeral where he talked about, how, you know, we, the blood family, will we'll look after Harry and William. I mean, are, are we on the road to more confrontation if he's closer to Earl Spencer and the other Spencers? Yeah, I suppose that's a very good point, Matt. But um, because uh, King Charles, well, he was Prince Charles then, uh, had this big, big fallout with Spencer over the funeral arrangements for Diana, and they, they have never got on. Oh, he's tricky. Mm. I mean, he, he's a very, I think he's a very intelligent man, but he's obviously tricky. Anyone that's had three wives, I think he's had. Um, mm can't be that easy, but he's, he's, he's a great historian and he runs Althrop, obviously very professionally. And, and you know, he's, he's, I mean, I met him, but I haven't met him recently. And he was fun. And Diana, of course, was quite close to him, except towards the end. And she really fell out with her brother mm. because she wanted a house on the estate. And there were loads and loads of cottages there. I think we've talked about this before. Mm. And he said, no, I, I, I can't put up with the publicity and the baggage that you bring with you. And she was really hurt and really angry and refused to speak to him after that and then went off on holiday with Mohammed al-Fayed and, of course, the rest is history. The rest is, uh, is history and it's very important to Harry. I mean, he's often talking about Diana, many interviews that he's done in, in recent years to, to, you know, to, to market his book or to promote his book. He's often spoke about the so in depth about the memory memory of Diana. 